Okay, everyone. So now we are going to be talking about strangles and how it affects horses. So let's do this guy. Okay, so strangles is a disease that affects the, uh, the respiratory system, the upper respiratory system, um, and it causes abscessation of the lymph nodes around the head, okay? And the reason why it has its name is because the, thing, the, the, the neck becomes so swollen that the horse would look like it would strangle because of how swollen the neck becomes. It is caused by a bacteria. So we have influenza and herpes virus. They're both caused by viruses. Now we're gonna have a disease that's caused by bacteria. So uh, it is caused by Streptococcus equi. Uh, if you all know, so Streptococcus is, if anybody has had strep throat, it's a bacteria that can cause a lot of pus. And if you have uh, had strep throat, you will understand it's a semi serious disease, strep throat. And when you have it, the doctors will want to treat it with antibiotics because when uh, the, it's a different streptococcus, okay? This is streptococcus equi, but they're all from the same uh, genus, okay? Different species, same genus. So when we have uh, strep throat, the doctor will want to treat with antibiotics because you want to kill those bacteria because it can reach the blood circulation and it can actually cause uh, problems with the heart. It can cause endocarditis, myocarditis, etc. So this is a possibility that can happen also with streptococcus equi, even though we don't always treat with antibiotics. Okay, so in humans, we always treat strep throat with antibiotics. In horses, it's not every case that is treated with antibiotics. So the disease strangles in horses uh, is treated a little bit different than we treat in humans. It's highly contagious, highly contagious. Okay, it's a bacteria that causes a lot of pus, um, the more virulent uh, strains of, step, uh, of strep equi are encapsulated, which impede the neutrophils to actually bind, ingest, and kill the bacteria. So the immune response in the beginning is uh, delayed on how to, you know, start uh, killing the bacteria initially. And then later on, it causes a very strong immune response, but in the beginning, it uh, doesn't kill the bacteria as much as it could. It is going to be transmitted by direct or indirect contact with the purulent discharge from uh, the nose of the horse. There's gonna be a lot of purulent discharge um, and it can be direct or indirect contact, which I depict here. Uh, some horses, after they had strangles, they continue to carry the disease in their guttural pouches in the form of chondroids, uh, and they can continue to, to contaminate and infect other horses, and they need to be a, we need to figure out who these horses are to uh, put a stop to that. So some of these horses can continue to shed the bacteria after you know, weeks or even a year or years after they don't even have the clinical signs anymore. The guttural pouch, so how is the transmission? The transmission is uh, the bacteria is going to enter through the mouth or the nose and it's going to affect the tonsils. Uh, the guttural pouch may or may not become infected. And for this horse, the ones that get infected, they can carry, it's called the empyema of the guttural pouch when it gets infected. And that's when, if those get infected, these horses can then develop chondroids, which is dry pus uh, and can continue to infect. They can be the carriers of this disease. Within hours, these bacteria are going to reach the mandibular and superpharyngeal lymph nodes, and they are going to infect them. And those are the ones that will be, uh, there's multiple lymph nodes around the head that can uh, become infected, okay? Uh, fever is going to be uh, one of the clinical signs. Uh, three to 14 days, um, after exposure, so it's not as quick as influenza, okay? Uh, mucopurulent nasal discharge, you're gonna have swelling and abscessation of the lymph nodes. Uh, you are going to have anorexia, depression, okay? So uh, a way to try to uh, feed these horses is to offer them meshes, okay, with warm water. So uh, it's more palatable, easy for them to, I mean, if anybody has had strep throat or any kind of sore throat, it's very, very difficult to swallow. 
So the same is going to happen with these horses. Pharyngitis, laryngitis, rhinitis can happen. Uh, sometimes ocular discharge, so a lot of pus coming out of the eye. Uh, there can be periorbital abscesses. There's not generally going to be a lot of cough. And it's, you know, for some reason, older horses are going to develop milder disease than younger horses, but they can still develop the disease, okay? The nasal shedding of the bacteria after a latent time where the, the horse is still getting the disease, the, the, the bacteria is infecting the, the lymph nodes. There can be four to 14 days and may and is going to stop three to seven weeks post-acute infection. So sometimes, so when these horses are positive for uh, strangles, they need to test negative that they're not shedding the bacteria anymore. Uh, 30 days after, because they can continue to shed the bacteria even a month after they got uh, done with the course of the disease. A horse that has had strangles need to have uh, its guttural pouches scoped to make sure that they are not harboring the bacteria there. So these are just some of the photos of uh, purulent nasal discharge. This one has even a little bit of blood. Uh, you can see here the swelling around the neck of these horses, and uh, these are all clinical signs of strangles. Here is swelling of the, or abscessation of these lymph nodes. Uh, you can see here, the lymph nodes have what we call superated, they broke out, uh, and the abscesses are now draining. This guy, same thing, this guy, same thing over here. So. Here's the thing, these lymph nodes, lots of pus, when they start to drain, you need to like remove the pus and not spread everywhere because this pus has a ton of bacteria in it. So uh, when the, the first, when you first lance these abscesses, you have to like try to collect the pus instead of just spreading everywhere. And then you can wash the little holes and flush and do uh, lavages to make sure that you're killing as many bacteria as possible. So the disease itself, uh, so the horse gets the disease, gets the abscessation, uh, the abscesses, you know, uh, superate, and then they, the horse gets better, goes on with the life, okay? So generally the disease itself is not as severe, is not as serious if you are able to, you know, maintain the horse semi-healthy with eating, with becoming, get, maintaining hydration, etc. cetera. Uh, what did I want to say? to lance, so you can only lance, and anybody that has had like uh, pimples, you can only lance, you can only squeeze these lymph nodes, uh, these lymph nodes, these abscesses uh, for this, the pus to come out after it's totally mature. So if it's still not mature, it's not soft yet, it's useless to lance because it will continue to form pus. So those are some of the lymph nodes that can uh, become infected. Uh, and this is, um, this is a normal guttural pouch, so you have to do, and you can see the amount of blood vessels around the guttural pouch. It's so vascularized and how it can become problematic if these horses are harboring this disease or if the guttural pouch has empyema. This is uh, chondroids that have been removed. So these are dried pus uh, that has been removed from a guttural pouch after the horse uh, has had the MPM of the guttural pouch and it became dry. So this is a horse that may have had strangles, let's say six months ago, okay? Uh, so this is the case of a horse that had this disease six months ago or, or, or a pony that, you don't know, you bring to a farm and I'm gonna draw here some paddocks. Um, and you bring this pony to a farm, and then here's right here, P.S. pony, horse, horse, another pony, another horse, pony two, I guess, horse, 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 and nothing against pony, okay? Horse, horse, horse. What's gonna happen is this, this pony arrives here, and then within a week, this guy has strength, it's starting to show signs, fever, discharge, uh, neck starting to get swollen, uh, this horse, this horse, but this guy here doesn't have anything. And then you move him around because, you know, there's all sorts of protocols for biosecurity to um, separate horse. There's going to be three types of horses in strangles and you can move him around and you can sell him and you can, but this is a pony, 
ponies that have that are care or ponies, horses that are carriers for strangles, they go places and they pass the disease and they are not even um, a lot of the times not even examined because they never get sick because they already got sick two, three years ago under a different owner and now they don't show fever anymore. So that's why it's important uh, when the animal has strangles to actually um, scope the good oral pouch to make sure that he is not harboring the disease, okay? The, that the disease hasn't infected the good oral pouches. Uh, the diagnose, we are going to culture. We're gonna do nasal swabs and culture. Uh, PCR, we can do PCR, which is to find the genetic material of the, of the, the strain, the uh, Streptococcus equi. Streptococcus zooepidemicus, which is a different one, commensal flora of the nose and can also cause disease, but not as severe as strangles. Uh, sometimes there is differences there too. You can actually catch them. And that's obviously zooepidemicus is not uh, equi, so that's not the disease. But we need to, you know, how do we diagnose? We have to culture and make sure that uh, you put a nasal swab and that culture grows as uh, streptococcus uh, equi. You can also, if you're not able to do a culture uh, from the nose, you can try the pus from aspirated from the abscesses, or you can compare uh, antibody titers. So you do serology of the blood and compare antibody titers, with, you know, every two weeks to see if it's going up. If it's going up, uh, even if the, the culture is negative, it's possibly uh, going to be strangles. And uh, and uh, you are going to investigate exposure that way. So even some horses, even if they don't get sick, they will have the antibody titers go up because they are mounting up uh, immune, uh, immunity against the disease. Uh, the serum titers are going to peak, to peak five weeks after the disease and they are going to remain high for at least six months, but sometimes a year or two years, okay? One thing that is important here is that a horse uh, that has had strangles, there is a myth that people say that horses only have strangles uh, once and never can get it again. That's not true. They can get it again. They just mount up a very strong immune response and they may not have it again super soon, but they may have it again, um, you know, a year or two or three down the road if they get exposed again. What is important is that horses don't get vaccinated again the next year after they have had strangles, so you don't um, mount up too much immunity because one of the main problems of strangles is not the disease itself, it's some of the complications that come after the disease, which we're gonna talk here in a second. Uh, so again, we can do code. Look at this guy. Remember we talked about um, discharge from the eye. Uh, the problem is the asymptomatic carrier. Uh, four to 50% of horses on farms with recurring strangles are carriers of the bacteria. So a farm that's always having strangles, they need to just separate some money one day to be able to scope everyone and wash those guttural pouches and start to remove. So farms that have strangles all the time are not good. Okay, they have to uh, start uh, trying to figure out which horse, which horses are the carriers. All horses that have had signs of infection should be tested three times and be negative on all before they're allowed to be reintroduced to healthy horse. So here. You have the disease, the horse is having the disease, the disease lasts, I don't know, two weeks. Uh, the abscesses get done and over with, and then you have to start because they can continue to shed the bacteria for several days after they're done with the disease. So you have to continue to do swabs to make sure that um, they stop shedding the bacteria before they uh, are reintroduced to the herd. This is why we say here, shedding can occur for weeks, two months after the infection. Um, treatment, most horses don't require treatment with antibiotics, but we need to give them food, palatable food, moist, uh, use hot water to try to uh, mash it. Uh, during an outbreak, uh, antibiotics should only be administered in the acute phase. So if you have a horse, you have an outbreak. So you have multiple horses getting sick. So you start temping all these horses. And as soon as this horse gets a temperature, you can start antibiotics with them. 
in the acute phase. Once abscesses have started to form, antibiotics should not be used. You can then use antibiotics after the abscesses um, superate, after the abscesses open, okay? During the, huge, the phase of abscessation, antibiotics are not used in the case of strangles. Uh, horses that are treated with antibiotics uh, are not going to develop a high enough immunity and they can get reinfected if they still remain exposed to horse or so another horse that continues to shed the bacteria, they can continue to get uh, reinfected. So it's, so it's important that if you're going to treat with antibiotics, great, but you have to have a very strong biosecurity with Lysol, foot baths, washing hands, gloves, uh, booties, like plastic booties on top of your boots, etc. okay? Um, which is important because in the case of like strangles, the, one of the most important biosecurity things is that you, and this is in all cases of uh, horses that are sick, you either separate a person to only deal with the sick horse, especially in all cases of contagious diseases, uh, the one person is going to deal with the sick horse, they come to the barn, they feed, they treat medication, blah, blah, blah foot bath, everything, leave the farm and don't come back. And then come back in the afternoon again and do the same. Don't pet any horse in between. Don't go to other farms to pet other horses. What's important, you either do that, or if it's the same person tending to all animals and you're gonna have to, them, uh, to have them separated. So for example, if we are talking about fields, then you may have to like the one horse here got positive. I'm gonna put positive for him. Uh, you can do like a little corral for him and then, or if you can put more, you know, bigger, uh, away from everyone else. And then you can actually, if horses start to become more positive, you toss them with a sick group. Uh, then you're gonna have the group that have been exposed, such as the, the other uh, pasture mates here. And then a group of horses, this, if they share a fence or if they share uh, a water trough in the middle of the fence. These are possibly exposed also. And then there's going to be a group of uh, around, but uh, not necessarily exposed because different owners, different uh, hand feeding them, etc. So you just need to, to keep this group separated and the horses that are being treated, that are being let uh, to develop the disease and they will be treated. So uh, they, need to be separated into uh, the group of positive horses. And it's important if you have the same person feeding all of them, they need to deal with all the healthy horses first and then go and deal with the sick horses, go home or take her, you know, if they're going, they need to be wearing overall, put inside a bag, get home, wash the overall, uh, and then take a shower, everything, don't touch anything, go back, Lysol, everything, hand sanitizer, etc and then do the same thing. They shouldn't be back and forth from sick horses and healthy horses. Um, once abscesses have been formed, we can in, try to enhance the maturation and drainage by putting hot packs uh, or ichthamol, sometimes even like furacin. Then we can lance the abscesses once they're mature enough and, and soft. And then we're gonna be daily flushing these open abscesses with uh, povidone, betadine, uh, fluorhexidine, we're gonna be flushing them uh, to kill all that extra bacteria. I'm gonna give benamine to these horses that will help with the inflammatory and the swelling. And uh, we may be giving, so penicillin is generally the choice uh, of antibiotic. Uh, we may start giving antibiotics then after the abscesses have superated, or we can, like the new horses, the ones that, uh, are in the febrile phase still and don't have all the other clinical signs may need, uh, you can start with antibiotic therapy for them also. One second, I need to uh, check an email here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's see here. Um, like I said, uncomplicated cases are not going to need antibiotics. Um, the ones that will need antibiotics, uh, penicillin is uh, the drug of choice. It, penicillin, um, you know, it's a very, uh, streptococcus are very, um, they can die. They can be killed with simple penicillin just because it, they're gram positive, very easy. Uh, if antibiotics are used, treatment course is usually weeks or longer to completely clear the infection. Uh, remember, 
that early treatment in uncomplicated cases may prevent the immune tree infection. So that's important too. Um, you don't generally use it. Uh, antibiotics are used in the beginning of the disease when they're febrile, still just having a fever or after the um, abscesses have been lanced. So this is one of the things that I, I need you guys to uh, put a star beside on your, on your slides because this is one of the most important things about strangles. It's the complications that happen after the horse has had strangles. Uh, there's multiple of them that can happen because it's such a, a, new, a, a strong immune disease that can, you know, the horses mount up such a, a strong immunity. Uh, so this is, this here is extremely important. So the complications, uh, number one is bastard strangles. Bastard strangles is when the abscesses, when the bacteria reaches the body, the blood circulation circulate and form abscesses in other organs, such as liver, lung, spleen, kidneys, brain, etc. So bastard strangles is this horse has had strangles. He seems to be clear. He's not shedding the bacteria from the nose anymore. And it's a horse that just has become unthrifty. He's not doing well. And he simply, uh, and there is really not much to be done other than simply after uh, he dies or you have to euthanize him, you do a necropsy and you find that there was an organ that had a massive uh, abscess in the organ. If it's the brain, he becomes neurologic. If it's the kidney, there is kidney failure, etc. cetera. So they're, it's they're very hard uh, to figure out if that's what the horse has, but knowing the history of the horse, this horse had strangled six months ago, then uh, it's more easy to figure that out. Uh, pneumonia, you know, just with any kind of active respiratory disease, you can have uh, pneumonia happening. Uh, after that, so the, the strangles itself can actually cause pneumonia of the lungs as opposed to just an upper respiratory infection. Goodrow pouch in Piema, we already talked about that. Endocarditis and myocarditis, so that's another, we already talked about this, it's the infection of the heart and obviously it can lead to death, okay? Uh, septic arthritis, so that's when the bacteria will go to the joints and will cause infection of the joints. And so you see these joints, you know, they blow up. That is a process. You have to open up all these joints and flush them. It's a pain. Uh, and then the other one is one called purpura hemorrhagica. And that disease is, uh, is an immune mediated disease in where the antibodies of, uh, of this horse will start to attack the body and will cause uh, vasculitis everywhere. There is uh, swelling there. The skin of the horse just uh, sloughs uh, totally off of, you know, it's not a good disease to have. Uh, so this is a horse that has had strangles, just to give you an idea. He's unthrifty, he never fully recovers. And then upon uh, being euthanized, upon necropsy, you see huge abscess in their brain. And that's what bastard strangles is. It can be in the liver, spleen, it can be kidney, it can be in other areas as well. Uh, the purpura hemorrhagica, like I said, it's a very strong a horse that has had more than a strong uh, immune response to the streptococcus. And it's an immune mediated disease. It is going to cause uh, necrotizing vasculitis. There is, nobody knows which horses are more, are going to be the ones predisposed to developing the disease, but it is, there is a theory that the ones that have too high of, a, of antibody titers, too high of an immune response, are more predisposed to um, developing purpura hemorrhagica. So, and that's the reason why we don't vaccinate horses for strangles the year after they had strangles. So, for example, they had strangles in 2020. In 2021, they don't get vaccinated for strangles. And in 2022, they may need, we may need to do a titer to see if they need to be vaccinated for strangles or not. If the antibodies are still high, they're not going to be, they're not going to be vaccinated uh, then either, okay? Uh, and this is why I say dexamet, so strong steroids are going to be used to treat uh, purpura in addition to antibiotics, but generally um, there isn't, I mean, very few horses survive. So there's swelling of the legs, there is necrotizing uh, vasculitis, as you can see, the skin just lops off of this horse. There's petechiation, uh, so there's mini hemorrhages happening everywhere in this horse, and they, you know, upon uh, necropsy, this is what you find. Okay, so how do we prevent 
Um, so most horses, how do we prevent strangle? So the, most horses develop solid immunity after they recover from strangle. So, you know, vaccination is one step, one part of prevention of strangles, but quarantine, good biosecurity is the most important thing that one can do to prevent uh, the disease. The, the, there is the intramuscular disease, uh, disease, the intramuscular vaccine, which is given in the neck, and there's the intranasal. The intranasal is what we call uh, modified life. So there's live bacteria that go to the nose to mimic more um, the disease itself. So it's just important then, because it's a bacteria that likes to form abscesses, is that if the veterinarian is uh, giving the intranasal vaccine um, to your horses, it's important that he doesn't inject or if he needs to wear gloves, remove the gloves, wash his hands really well so he doesn't do injections on the neck of these horses uh, with other vaccines, etc., so they don't, don't inadvertently add, uh, introduce bacteria to the site of injection because it will cause an abscess there. Uh, we already talked about that. Quarantine. You know, quarantine is the most one of the most important things to do for new arrivals at any facility. Sometimes it's hard to catch all strangle cases because of the subclinical. Uh, carrier. So the horse that just carry them in the guttural pouch, it's not like a farm owner is going to just scope horses upon arrival to see if they have had, they have had strangles. It's just, you know, something that hopefully quarantine will catch horses that are going to get sick or not. If the new acute phases quarantine will catch because within 14 days, horses will start to develop fever and you can start dealing with them then. Uh, like I said, in the outbreak management, you there's going to be you know a group, three groups of horses, I mean, and you have to maintain them separate at all times. No nose to nose contact, no shared feed tubs, no shared water buckets in shows. I've been to a show here in Lexington, and they had like a gigantic water trough and horse all horse from all sorts of places just drinking from the same water trough. This is not good practice. So. You, everybody with their own bucket, you know, water coming from the spigot, etc. So like I said, with the horses, I already drew the little graph there, uh, how to do uh, management of this disease. Now, if you don't have fields that you can put these horses in, which is uh, drawn there. So for example, if you don't, I can't, I'm gonna throw this pen away. Uh, if you only have stalls, so say for example, a barn over here, Stall, 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 stall. Um, so the best way to do this is to put that horse in this stall here and then put no one here, no one here, and maybe no one here, and then have a foot bath. Have a foot, oh my gosh. Have a foot bath here and a foot bath here. Um, and then this only area here is only entered by the same person that's dealing with the horse. There's foot bath, there is Lysol, there is all sorts of disinfectants. You deal with the horse, you go home and you don't touch anyone else. And then you can put other horse here, but they need to use the other entrance to the barn. They cannot pass in front of this horse, okay? Uh, this is what I say here. Clean horses first, separate caretakers. I already said all that. Okay, uh, disinfectant. Uh, after you're done with the disease, you need to disinfect, or if you can disinfect every day, spray Lysol, Clorox. Uh, it's just going to depend. If you have a, a, a barn made of center block that's, you know, and painted, those are non-porous surfaces, so very, very easy to disinfect. A barn made with uh, wood is more difficult to disinfect because it's porous surface, so you have to spray, um, say you're gonna dilute Clorox and spray after you the horse is done. You're going, the muck from the horse needs to be burned. It cannot be spread, cannot be mixed with the, you know, regular horses, etc. okay guys. Uh, after you're done with the horse and he can be in, reintroduced back to the herd, you have to um, disinfect his stall, disinfect all his buckets, and hopefully you're disinfecting his buckets daily anyway to try to minimize the number of bacteria in his environment so he 
is stopping to get reinfected and reintroduced uh, to bacteria. Uh, not all bacteria, guys. We're talking about Streptococcus equi. Um, and then you have to spray his stall and then let it dry. And then 30 minutes later, spray again, let it dry. You have to do it at least one, twice, at least twice to spray and dry. Maybe three times is more ideal. What do you say here? Water and feed troughs should be clean and disinfected daily. Stall should be cleaned after manure removal. Uh, compost the manure. If you're, if you're somebody that likes to spread manure, you need to compost the manure away from other manure piles. So you, because that manure has the, the possibility to actually uh, be problematic to other horses, I prefer to just burn that. Or in my case, I, I haul manure off the property. So just, you know, it, it, if it can be hauled off, it's uh, better. Pastures used to house infected horses should be rested for at least four weeks. Okay. Uh, vaccination. This is this guy giving the intranasal vaccine. Um, I already talked about this. The intranasal vaccine uh, provides better immunity uh, because it's in the nose and it provides the immunity. Uh, in the location that it's necessary uh, a little bit more quickly. Uh, it is recommended to not vaccinate during an outbreak or immediately after for at least about a year. We already talked about this. Uh, once recovered from uh, uh, active infection, 75% of horses have immunity for up to one to two years. We already talked about that. Blood antibody titers can help determine which horse needs to be vaccinated. We already talked about that. So I think one of the most important things about strangles uh, is the biosecurity. The biosecurity is uh, incredibly important and not to mix things between sick horses and to, you know, to be able to like use gloves, wash hands, foot bath, and to separate the sick horses uh, the, from the ones that uh, have not been in contact. There is like the clean horses that haven't even been in contact with the disease and have different caretakers for all of them. And what else did I want to say? It is just, it's a disease that uh, the disease itself is not the most horrible thing. The problem of strangles is that some of the horses will have those complications, which I need you guys to memorize them. So those, the complications are the most problematic because they are actually life uh, threatening. They will kill the horses. Okay. Sounds good. If you have any questions, contact me.